Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hemp Horticulture Series. Today, we'll be talking about how to and why you would want to defoliate your medicinal hemp plants. Defoliation is the removal of leaves for multiple beneficial purposes. And we'll be going over the most common reasons for defoliating your plant, as well as how to do so. Note that this is a beginner's guide to defoliation. So we won't be covering the more advanced techniques, such as extreme defoliation and lollipopping, pruning weaker stems, and removal of flower and bud sites to guide all the growth to just the top of the plant. So there are a few reasons for defoliation, and a lot of that actually depends on if you're growing indoors or outdoors. This is because one of the main functions of the plant leaves is to absorb light for photosynthesis, creating new growth. So for indoor plants, if the light source is only coming from above and not reaching the sides and lower leaves, then it makes sense to remove the lower leaves as even with the removal of the large top leaves, indoor lights generally lose their intensity really quickly further away from the light source. So even if the light reaches the bottom of the plant, the leaves at the bottom will still get a lot less light than the leaves at the top. We also want to remove the leaves instead of just leaving them there, because by removing the leaves that don't get much light, it helps the plant focus on the growth of the rest of the plant so that the parts that are more productive grow larger and faster. Outdoors, because of how intense the sun is, defoliation for light intensity reasons isn't usually an issue unless you have very dense vegetation. And if that's the case, because the sun is able to hit the plant at all angles with a similar intensity throughout the entire plant, it does make sense then to defoliate the entire plant instead of just the bottom parts of the plant since when the light is able to pass through, it will keep its brightness no matter how high the leaves are on the plant. When the plant is in flower, defoliation plays a similar role in that to maximize yields, you'll want as much light to reach the developing buds as possible. So removing any of the leaves blocking the light to the bud sites will help with just that. Here again, defoliating indoor plants is more important since light only comes from above. So there are a lot more areas where the leaves can create a shadow on the buds for the entire light cycle. While outdoor plants have the benefit of the sunlight shining on a plant from all angles, creating very few blind spots. Other than lighting issues, defoliation plays another role in helping to combat against pests, mold, and mildew. For preventative purposes, you want to defoliate leaves that are touching each other because that could trap moisture which leads to mold and mildew. And for the same reason, you also want to defoliate leaves if the foliage is too dense, preventing airflow through the plant that, again, can also lead to trap moisture, mold, and mildew. Now, if a leaf is already affected by mold, mildew, or has a bunch of bug eggs stuck on the underside of it, then removing the leaf will help prevent it from spreading to the rest of the plant. So how do you defoliate? There isn't really a wrong way to do it, as you can use clean hands to bend and pinch off the leaves, scissors, pruning snips, all the way down to razor blades disinfected with alcohol. But from my experience, disinfecting your tools isn't necessary as long as you're working with clean hands or clean tools. Now for leaf removal, you want to get it at the base of the petiole, which is the stalk that attaches the leaf to the stem. Just be careful if working with your hands as sometimes when pulling on a leaf, you might take some of the outer stem wall with it. So pinching and bending the petiole until it snaps 
is a safer alternative to just trying to pull it off. Now as for how much to defoliate, this is completely up to you. Although for beginners, less is always safer, as long as you achieve what you're defoliating for. For bushy plants that have airflow issues, you want to remove just enough throughout the plant so that you can at least barely see through the plant, which also ensures that the airflow has a clear path through the plant and then making sure that no fan leaves are resting on top of each other. Also, stick with removing the largest fan leaves first, as it's much easier to remove a large fan leaf that's blocking airflow than to have to remove four smaller ones for the same effect. For pest issues, check the underside of leaves, especially on the easier to access lower parts of the plant. And if there's a lot of eggs, Removal of the leaf is always safer than trying to manually get rid of the eggs. This is the same for leaves with powdery mildew that's been completely covered to prevent it from spreading. Otherwise, for general defoliation, this is more important for indoor plants because of the lighting issues, and removing all of the leaves from the bottom 20 to 25% of the plant at the end of the vegetative stage is a good way to start to maximize the top growth. And then throughout the flowering stage, you'll just want to remove any large fan leaves blocking the bud sites once the flowers start to appear. Finally, there are two ways you can choose to defoliate. Either a few leaves slowly each time, over a long period of time, or all at once. By removing problem leaves slowly as the plant grows, this prevents stress on the plant so that it doesn't affect its growth rate. And by doing one large defoliation session, it puts all the stress and shock on the plant at once, so that even if it stunts the growth, the plant only needs to recover once from the defoliation. Also, because of this, you don't want to defoliate when a plant is sick or weak, as the added stress will just make it worse. And you also want to avoid defoliating a lot when the plant is deep in the flowering stage, as the high amount of stress can affect the yields at this point. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch available at Amazon in print and digital, with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.